All right, we are back. We're gonna do three by three systems now. So again, I did the same um, equations all the way across just so you guys can see the different ways. Again, when you get to the test, I highly doubt that they're gonna say, oh, you have to use elimination or you have to use substitution or you have to use matrices or whatever. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be one of those where you can pick your way that you wanna do it and go about it. So whatever works best for you is what I suggest that you really make sure you have down. So first one we're gonna do is we are going to solve using substitution. So if you're gonna solve using substitution, you need to solve for one variable um, and you wanna solve for a variable, again, that does not have a coefficient. So in this case, the only one that gives me that option is this negative Z right here. Um, anything else, I'd have to start dividing and I'd get fractions right off the bat and we don't wanna mess with those right off the bat. So if I was gonna solve this one for Z, instead of moving the two X and the three Y to the other side, I'm gonna move Z to the other side and then I'm gonna move that four to the other side. So it's gonna look like Z is equal to two X plus three Y um, minus four. So again, when I move minus Z to the other side, it becomes positive Z, and then I move positive four to the other side, it becomes negative four. Now, we are going to take this and we are going to plug it in for Z in my other two equations. I already feel like I'm gonna run out of room, but we're just gonna try our best and see. So I'm gonna plug it into this one first, and I'm gonna get three X plus four Y plus two, and then plug in this whole thing, two X plus three Y minus four, four is equal to 11, tiny writing. You're gonna distribute that two and then you're just gonna combine like terms, okay? So um, I'm gonna still have three X plus four Y and then I'm gonna have plus four X plus six Y minus eight is equal to 11. Combine like terms, X's go together. So I have seven X, Y's go together, I have 10 y and then that negative eight needs to go to the other side and that's going to become 19. okay circle that because that is going to be needed later on so remember your goal when you're doing a three by three using substitution or elimination is i am trying to create oops you can't really see the whole page um you're trying to create a two by two system because then you can solve a two by two system so that is your goal the whole entire time so we've created our first equation for our two by two. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna plug it into Z right here. So now, kind of break up your work so you don't confuse yourself. Um, you're gonna have five X plus five Y minus three. And then again, plug in this whole thing. Two X plus three Y minus four is equal to negative one. Distribute, so we keep what we have in the front. This is gonna become negative six X, this is gonna become negative nine Y, and this is gonna become positive 12 is equal to negative one. We're gonna combine all of our like terms. So positive five X, negative six X, that's gonna give us negative X. Positive five Y, negative nine Y, that's gonna give us negative four Y. And then we're gonna move that 12 to the other side. So it's gonna be minus 12, which is gonna give us negative 13. Okay, so you've substituted in and you've gotten down to two variables. That's good, that's what it's supposed to look like. Now you're gonna put these two together. So you have 7x plus 10y is equal to 19. And then you have negative x minus 4y is equal to negative 13. However you wanna solve that. So um, I like to solve using elimination. I'm just not a substitution person. So if I wanna solve this using elimination, I'm gonna multiply this whole bottom by seven because then it's gonna create a positive and a negative seven X. So I'm gonna get negative seven X minus 28 Y is equal to seven times 13 is, let me make sure before I mess up everything up. Seven times 13. 91, so negative 91. And then we still have what we had on top. And then you're just gonna go through and you're gonna eliminate. So these are gonna eliminate. This is gonna become negative 18y is equal to negative 91. And um, positive 19 is gonna give me negative 72. 
And then we are going to divide by that 18. So divide by negative 18, divide by negative 18. And we're going to get that y is equal to 4. Now you're going to take that and you're going to plug it into either one of these equations that you want to plug it into. I'm going to plug it into the first one just because they're all positive, so less chance of me messing up negatives along the way. So I have 7x plus 10 times 4 is going to give me 40 is equal to 19. I'm going to subtract 40, subtract 40. And that's going to give me 7x is equal to negative 21. Divide by 7 divide by 7, x is equal to negative 3. Now that you've solved your 2 by 2, you are going to take these two answers that you just got and you are going to plug them in to this equation right here. So we're going to say that z is equal to 2 times negative 3 plus 3 times 4 minus 4. This is going to give us negative 6 plus 12 minus 4 this is 12 minus 10, so z is equal to 2. All right, write it as an ordered pair. So always x's first, y's, then z's. All right, so that's how you're going to solve using substitution. If you want to solve using elimination, then you need to think about eliminating um, a certain variable. So you can pick whichever variable you want. You just want to pick whichever one's the easiest. So if you look at your x's, right off the bat, there's going to be no like easy substitutions. Every single time that you try to, or easy eliminations, every time that you try to eliminate, you're going to have to multiply um, both equations to try to eliminate one of those x's. If you look at your y's, same thing. If you look at your z's, what's nice about your z's is that you have this negative z. So if I want to eliminate 2z, I'm just going to multiply this by 2, and I'll, I'll be done. If I want to multiply negative 3z, I'll multiply this by negative 3, and I'll be done. So instead of having to multiply both equations, you're only multiplying one. So z is going to be your best option. You can pick x and y, and you still get the same thing. Um, it's just maybe one extra step of work. So let's go through, and we're going to try to eliminate z. So first, we're going to couple these first two equations together. All right? So... We have 3x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 11. And then in order to eliminate my z's, I'm going to need to multiply this by a 2 because then that will create negative 2z and they'll eliminate. So this is going to be 4x plus 6y minus 2z is equal to 8. So that's me taking that second equation, multiplying it by 2 so that these z's will eliminate. Now mm -hmm. I can go through... And I'm going to say this is 7x plus 10y. These are going to eliminate is equal to 19. Look at that. Same equation that you got right over here. So we're looking good. Now we're going to take and we're going to create our second equation. So we're going to couple the second and the third equation together. So if you want to couple the second and third equation together, all right, you're going to need to multiply this whole top equation, or the second equation, whatever, by negative 3 so that this creates a positive 3z that will eliminate this. So if I multiply by negative 3, negative 6x minus 9y plus 3z is equal to negative 12. So that's that second equation multiplied by negative 3. All right? Then we're going to pull down our next one. 5x plus 5y minus 3z is equal to negative 1. Z's are going to eliminate. Awesome. These are going to come together and be negative x. Negative 4y is equal to negative 13. Now, if you guys look... Again, this equation, that equation match, this equation, that equation match. So now you've created your two by two system. And again, you'll just go through and you'll solve the exact same way. All right. So this one will also end negative three comma four comma two. Good. Now, last one is 
the Gaussian elimination. So this is for the people who don't like the first two. If you like one of the first two, rock it. Awesome. Cool. If you don't, then you can do this way. And this way, in my opinion, is just as easy as these two. And you honestly probably have less chance of error just because it's a little bit better organized. So first you're going to set up your matrix. So it'll be three, two, five, four, three, five, two, negative one, negative three, 11, four, negative one. Okay, so just pulling all those coefficients with the negatives if needed. Um, and now we are working to create that triangle of zeros right here, okay? We've talked about that triangle of zeros before. Now, if you always work one, two, three, it will always be three steps, all right? If you start going in a different order, sometimes you're gonna zero things out and then when you go to do your next step, you're gonna end up messing it up and having to go back. So I always go one, two, three. So we're gonna start with this two. How can I make that two a zero? There's different options, okay? The easiest option is gonna be if you multiply two times R1 and you subtract three times R2, that will give you your new R2, okay? The reason we pick this is because now this number right here is gonna equal six, and then you're gonna subtract this number right here is gonna equal six. So six minus six is gonna give us zero. That's what we're trying to get to. So that's going to look like, I'm gonna kind of write it kind of small over here on the side. So two times R1 is gonna give you six, eight, four, 22, okay? Three times R2 is gonna give you six, nine, negative three, and 12. And this is a big subtraction problem, okay? Six minus six is zero, eight minus nine is negative one, four minus negative three is four plus three, that's seven, 22 minus 12, that's 10. That's gonna become our new R2. So now we're gonna come right here and we're gonna type that in. So this stays the same, three, four, two, 11, that didn't change. This is gonna become zero, negative one, seven, and 10. And then the bottom one stayed the same also. All right, so we got our first zero, that's awesome. Now we're gonna work to the one below. So we're gonna try to zero out this five right here. So if we wanna zero out that five right there, obviously you can't use R2 because zero plus anything is still gonna keep it the same. So we're gonna have to use R1. Um, and again, you're kind of thinking if there's no number that like one can multiply to get to the other, if you just multiply them by the opposite and subtract, that's always gonna work. So if I take five, R1 minus 3R3 three three to give me my new R3, that's going to work because I'm going to get positive 15 here minus 15. That's going to give me zero. So if I multiply the top by five, I'm going to get 15, 20, 10, and then five times 11 is going to give me 55. I wish I would have given myself a little bit more room to do this one. Okay, then I multiply the bottom by three. So I'm gonna get 15, 15. This is gonna give me negative nine and this is gonna give me negative three. And then this again is a big subtraction problem. So this is gonna give me zero, five, 10 minus negative nine is gonna give me 19. 55 minus negative three is gonna give me 58. Let's type that in. So the top again is never gonna change when you do this actually. And then zero, five, 19, and 58. Okay. Last one is to get this five. Now, when you do your very, very last one, the last zero that you're trying to do, you have to use row two. If you use anything, if you use row one, all right, then this zero that you just worked hard to get to will turn into some other number. So, you have to use row two every single time. In this case, it really works out because we're just gonna do five times R2 plus R3 to give us our new R3 because this is gonna give me negative five here. 
So I'm going to get 0, negative 5, 35, and then 50. These numbers are getting a little out of hand, but that's okay. 0, 5, 19, and 58. So this stays 0, which is good. This becomes 0. Right here, this is going to become 54. And this is going to become 108. That was your last step. So now you can write your final matrix. So again, we have not touched row 1 this whole time. 0, negative 1, 7, 10. And then this one is 0, 0, 54, 108. All right. Once you've created that zero, that triangle of zeros, you're going to rewrite them as equations and use back substitution. So if you rewrite, you have 3x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 11. That was the first equation that we had in the problem. That makes sense because, again, we never messed with R1. Our next equation is negative y plus 7z is equal to 10. And then your last equation is 54z is equal to 108. So back substitution means you start at the bottom and you work your way back. So start here and then work up. So 54z equals 108. Divide by 54. Divide by 54. You're going to get that z is equal to 2. We're going to use that and plug it into the one above. So when we plug it into the one above, negative y plus 14 is equal to 10 because we plugged it in right here. 7 times 2 is 14. This is going to give me that negative y is equal to negative 4. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. y is equal to positive 4. And then we're going to take this and this and plug it into this one. So 3x plus, if I plug in 4 right here, 4 times 4 is going to give me 16. 2 times 2 is going to give me 4 is equal to 11. So we have 3x plus 20 is equal to 11. Subtract 20, subtract 20. 3x is equal to negative 9. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is equal to negative 3. So again, it gives you the same answer as the last two. So we're going to get negative 3, comma 4, comma 2. So lots of variation in how you guys can do it. Again, I'm going to show you in the calculator real quick. So if you're going to do it in the calculator, your only way to do it in the calculator is to use the matrices. So it's just like the one I showed you in the last video. You're going to start by you have to put in the command, which is menu 7-5 that R-R-E-F, and then however you want to input your matrix, this one is three rows by four columns. Then we're going to hit OK, and we're going to type in. So it's going to be three, two, five, five, oops, go up, three, four, two, negative one, negative three, eleven, Four, negative one. All right, once you've typed in all your stuff, you just hit enter, and again, it pops out negative three, positive four, negative two. If you guys ever mess up typing it in, if you just click up and highlight it and hit enter, it does it for you. So like if you messed up a positive or negative, then you can go back and just fix it instead of going back in and typing in the whole matrix. Um, okay, I hope this helps. So if you knew, again, keep going through. If you need help on anything on the next couple pages, make sure you're checking into the next video.